My name is Jody Hamerda, and I'm an associate faculty member here at UAGC and host for the session, The Significance of Mentoring Underrepresented Minority Women in STEM. By joining today, you acknowledge that this session is being recorded and will be shared with the TLC related materials. Microphones will be muted for the presentation, but we encourage you to post questions and comments in the chat. Also, we have enabled live transcript transcription. If you would like to use it, click the show captions button at the bottom of your Zoom window. Now, I am pleased to introduce you to Katina Artinent. I has been such an incredible journey serving as her chair, and I'm so pleased to call her um, a close colleague. Please take it away. Thank you so much, Jody. I really appreciate uh, the introduction, and I am so excited about this topic. Uh, I have been um, researching and living in this space for quite some time, and I'm so excited to be able to present this here at TLC. So a little bit about myself. Not only am I a doctoral candidate at UAGC studying org development and leadership, I'm also an HR technology platform engineer, as well as a talent ambassador and a peer mentor, as well as a college preparedness advisor to families. Why this study? This screen is faster than me. This study was vital for fostering a more inclusive and equitable STEM environment, ensuring that underrepresented minority women have the opportunities and support they need to thrive in their careers. Also, as an underrepresented minority woman myself working in STEM, this study served as a personal journey of reconciliation. Also to address, examine, and understand underrepresentation, the impact of mentoring, and the systemic barriers that underrepresentation, underrepresented minority individuals face when advancing their careers in STEM. My personal experience with mentoring. So I've had limited access to mentoring over my 20 year career within STEM. I've been able to um, bridge that gap by leveraging learning and training that was made available to me to advance my career. My career progression mainly came from sponsors or job change. The statement of the problem of this research, underrepresented minority women have disproportionately low representation in STEM leadership roles leading to their exclusion from supervisory or partner positions within STEM. The specific problem here is that underrepresented minority women in STEM are less likely than their similarly skilled and experienced colleagues to receive mentoring opportunities with senior leaders, which hinders their career advancement. Why this study? The purpose of this phenomenological study was to understand the significance of mentorship for underrepresented minority women who have attained management positions. The study aimed to help practitioners and scholars enhance hiring practices, leadership development, and perceptions of underrepresented minority women in STEM leadership roles. Also, it sought to assist practitioners in recognizing how the intersectionality of race and gender influences existing mentoring programs. My research questions. The first one is what are the lived experiences of underrepresented minority women working in STEM managerial roles in the New York tri-state area concerning the role of their mentoring opportunities they had to advance their careers. The secondary question is what meaning does these under, do these underrepresented minority women working in STEM roles within the New York tri-state area attribute to their lived experiences of the importance of their mentoring opportunities to their career advancement? The methodology. A qualitative phenomenological study 
a study approach was chosen to explore the lived experiences of participants regarding the mentoring practices they encountered throughout their careers. This method emphasized the participants' lived experiences, perceptions, and the meanings they ascribe to these experiences. To gather this data, 10 participants were interviewed, each of whom shared their lived experiences with mentoring and career progress. From these interviews, themes emerged that provided answers to those research questions. The findings from the study, we tied them into themes, which wrapped up into these two research questions. So for the first research question, the lived experiences and mentoring opportunities, the three themes that emerged were identity and underrepresentation, how underrepresented minorities, minority women's sense of underrepresentation shaped their mentoring experiences and career opportunities. The second theme was development and leadership. Mentoring, mentoring contributes to the development of leadership skills we found. Also, mentoring and career progress. Mentorship was pivotal in career progression. The second research question and themes were the meanings that were attributed to the mentoring experiences. One theme, the development in leadership. Leadership skills developed through mentoring are seen as crucial for career advancement. Professional relationships. Success was often attributed to strong mentoring relationships. And the final theme in this study personal and emotional responses, how the emotional reactions reflected the significance of mentoring. The conceptual framework that was used for this study was critical race theory and intersectionality. Critical race theory examines and addresses the ways in which race, racism interact with other forms of social stratification and impact society. Intersectionality emphasizes the interconnected nature of race and gender, illuminating how these intersecting experiences create unique forms of compound privilege and discrimination. So from the study, we found that mentorship, advocacy, and supportive networks significantly influence career advancement. Effective mentorship must address both systemic barriers, which is critical race theory, and compounded challenges of intersecting identities, which is intersectionality. Critical race theory and intersectionality provide a crucial framework for understanding the systemic and compound challenges faced by underrepresented minority women in STEM, underscoring the importance of comprehensive mentorship and advocacy in overcoming these barriers. Here are some implications for practice, specifically around mentorship programs. They should be tailored, matching underrepresented minority women with mentors who share background, background, similar backgrounds and experiences. Also to address the specific challenges by creating programs that tackle distinctive issues faced by underrepresented minority women in STEM and target the content in these mentoring programs to design training that specifically address precise issues faced by minorities in STEM and foster inclusivity create a supportive environment through informed diversity training. Here's some recommendations for additional research. Assessing the advocacy, this mouse is just busy. Assessing the advocacy and policy, the impact of the policy. Study more representation and experiences. Examine systemic issues and investigate systemic racism. My closing thoughts, begin with the end in mind. In any type of STEM related work, there's always ideation, thought around developing a solution. If we start with the diversity of thought, that includes 
in, uh, underrepresented minority women think it would be a better outcome. Consider equitable solutions. Mentoring matters and representation rocks. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share my research. And I reserve this time if you have any questions or comments. Thank you so much, Katina. That was amazing. I really appreciate you sharing your research with us. Um, I am happy to feed any chat questions your way. So for those of you who are participating, um, I would love to see um, questions from you. I am curious, mm -hmm. um, in your doctoral journey, you're in a you're in a position where you've done a preliminary preliminary oral defense, and you're actually have used this uh, TLC presentation to prepare for your final oral defense. Uh, what changes do you feel as a student doing research for the first time? How did you feel in giving today's presentation on this topic versus how you felt speaking about a lot of the similar things in your preliminary oral defense? I am more confident today than I was in my preliminary oral defense. My preliminary oral defense, I was, uh, I feel like I was more at the mercy, like, please let me continue. And now in this stage, I am uh, confident that I've done the justice as an instrument for this research, for this topic, for the participants to say that it's about finished. And the findings were extraordinary, substantial, yet there's still more, more work that needs to be done. But for this point in time, I'm confident that uh, I've been able to articulate the research, articulate uh, the findings, as well as some things that we didn't expect to see. But in the conversations with the participants, their experiences uh, added more color and flavor to the research. I love it, I love it. So Dr. Robinson, who is on the committee, uh, he says not really a question, but he really appreciates that you used critical race theory and intersectionality as your framework. It's been such a pleasure seeing your growth throughout this project and super happy and proud of your success. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I love the fact that you use that framework um, in this day and time when it's not necessarily... Um, publicly supported. And so I, I love that you continued um, helping that, that framework move forward. Um, uh, Dr. Jennifer Lewis says, how do we better address systemic issues in mentoring from the perspective of an organization? How do we change those mentoring programs to ensure we tackle that? One item that I found in my research was to keep offering various programs. As we see in the workforce, the workforce is more diverse now than ever before, right? And if you offer more inclusive solutions to mentoring, then I think you'll get better outcomes uh, within organizations, large or small, right? Even if their organization is five strong, there's probably five different identities within that organization. And if we don't do a out of the box, vanilla, as we call it in technology solution, then, and we add more inclusive thoughts and, and add more inclusive questions, then we'll get more people to volunteer and raise their hand to provide some breadcrumbs and guidelines to support people who may want to know. Like what I've also found in this study is that when you peel away the layers of the things that make us different, we all want the same thing. We all want to grow and we all want to be able to contribute to the solution, no matter our color, 
no matter our gender. And so it is those barriers that get in the way of the good stuff. Look, something like a, a piece of fruit, right? The skin, you got to peel away the orange, unless you like orange peel and zest in your, in your teeth. But <laughs> it's the, the fruit inside that is amazing. And so same with creating mentoring programs that can address some initial layers that may prevent certain groups of people from being more successful. Yeah. It, and it, it shouldn't take long. A few of the respondents, a few of the participants said that one session or one opportunity changed the way, changed their trajectory almost immediately. And so yeah. the things that I know before this and now with this is that it's the things that keep us common that's more important. And if we just add a little more time on the front end of this with providing support to those that are, are different or may even be able to, may understand differently, I think we can get better, farther and faster. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, I want to get to a question that I'd love for you to end with, but first I just want to share that Dr. Jennifer Lewis said, I love the perspective of finding the commonality, the common ground. We're all the same inside team and want the same things. Um, okay. So when we were first chatting before we started this session, you were sharing about your experience um, yesterday um, presenting at NASDAQ. And in the time that I have worked with you, I am constantly impressed. And you and you have a slide on all the roles that you have, all the things that you 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 are. You're heavily tapped into networking. Mm -hmm. And um uh, Tyler LePew is asking, uh, first he's saying, thank you for doing this important work, but then he's asking, how do you connect with and recruit mentors? <laughs> because you're very good at the networking component, but you and I have talked about the challenges mm -hmm. of finding the right mentor and getting them to offer time to others. Yes, because it's so... Finding mentors is it, it it's it's like a shopping mall. I'm a shopper. I love the mall. And sometimes, depending on what your need is, you may need more than one, right? You might need a mentor in my tech space. I'm in a niched tech space. And so a mentor in that niche will help me take what I know and improve upon it within this space, right? But then a mentor who may be a leader in understanding and leading technology as a whole might serve, uh, serve me in another way. And so understanding first you as uh, the message and the methods of your career and the things that you want to do, you have to own it. Same with seeking out mentoring opportunities. Organizations offer them. Sometimes they're they're not they are not one size fits all. But seeking uh, first your first line of defense of who's around me, who's in my space, even LinkedIn. Right. There's all of these LinkedIn groups that I found for the, the purpose of this research that cater to me and who I am as a woman in technology, who I am as a black woman in technology uh, and who some of the things of who I strive to be. Right. I might want to dabble in some other types of uh, technology. And so I found some great people to begin communicating with you and just like any other type of relationship a mentor is a is a relationship and so first getting to know a person to even see if they are compatible with you uh to just have basic conversation right and then as you build on your basic conversation hey i need a mentor can you 
offer me. I have a mentee who is um, a baby boomer. And so she reached out to me. She said, Katina, I need some help. I don't know how to work with these kids, but I need to work with these kids. And so in talking with her and we meet regularly now about monthly since this of this work because she wanted to still thrive in technology and so she had to learn how to be respectful of younger people who are who are aged as her grandchildren right and so that that sometimes mentoring is not what we think i was so honored that she asked me to mentor her because it is an honor it, and it's, it, you hold it like, uh, like with um, delicate gloves because you are providing information to someone else that's going to take it and hopefully share it with others or utilize it in a way that improves her career. And she, I might add, after a few months, uh, is doing better in communicating and collaborating with a team of mixed generations. At, at where she was frustrated. She was ready to go back to doing some other stuff that was uh, comfortable and more natural to her. And so building a relationship first and then seeing if they are worthy to be your mentor. I love it. Absolutely amazing. And I love that you spoke about how honored you were to be asked. And, and sometimes you have to say no because you don't you don't have the bandwidth and the time that you want to really dedicate to someone, but that, that sometimes is a no for now. Correct. And so for, for people who are looking for a mentor, I love it. Look, look for people, um, that you have that connection with. I, that is so, that is so important. Um, so our time has come to an end. So thank you so much soon to be Dr. Artanent, and thank you to the audience for your participation in today's session. Please use the survey link in the chat. I just posted it um, to nominate TLC presentations for conference awards and share your feedback on this presentation. Um, it has been such a pleasure and um, thank you just so much for being here today. Thank you so much. I appreciate this opportunity. This is awesome.